Shri K. V. Raghunath Reddy, Governor of West Bengal, Dr. Srimati C. Srojini Reddy, Mr. Justice M. M. Smile, Chairman of the Session, Swami Atma, Atmasthanan G. General Secretary Ramakrishna Mutt and Ramakrishna Mission, Swami Ranganathanan Ji, Vice President Ramakrishna Mutt and Mission, Swami Prabhanan Ji, Assistant Secretary Ramakrishna Mutt and Mission, Swami Lokeshwaranan Ji, Convener of the Committee for celebrating the centenary of the Chicago Con Address of Swami Vivekananda, Mr. George Fremont, former Consul General of the Republic of France to India, Professor Sabhisachi Bhattacharya, Vice Chancellor Vishwabharati, Dr. R. B. Rebakov, Deputy Director, Institute of Oriental Studies, Moscow, Reverend Swami uh, Sanyasis and Sanyasins, Brahmacharis, brothers and sisters. May I say how happy I am to be to be associated with this function. I have always looked forward to visiting Bengal and the great metropolis that is Calcutta. Here one breathes in the ambivalence of the lofty, spiritual and intellectual traditions of Bengal, the heritage of art, literature and culture, the enlightened and diverse towards social reform, the heroism and sacrifice during our struggle for freedom and the resolute advance of the masses manifesting the power of the people in practical tasks of nation building. I thank the Ram Krishna Mission for associating me with this conference which is more than timely for the world as it is torn asunder by various forces in the world. The vision of Swami Vivekananda has been the subject matter of your deliberations over the last eight days or so, involving a wide range of distinguished scholars and thinkers from India and abroad. I have pleasure in extending my greetings to all the participants and in expressing my sincere appreciation of their learned contributions. Friends, right from the time when I was a student, I have been deeply moved by the luminance of Swami Vivekananda as reflected by records of his addresses, his letters, prose and poetic writings, his conversations with people, and by words about him by the greatest amongst our national leaders. As, had been, as has been mentioned, Bapu had visited Balurmat on 6 February 1921, the birth anniversary of Swami Vivekananda. He was accompanied by Pandit Motila Nehru and Maulana Muhammad Ali. Bapu had said, and I quote, I have come here to pay my homage and respect to the revered memory of Swami Vivekananda. This is what Bapu said, I have gone through his works very thoroughly, and after having gone through them, the love that I had for my country became a thousandfold and far that flows through Swami Vivekananda. This is what I am not I, but Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru said. And what he said is true for our generation today and the coming generations also. The theme of your conference has been the commemoration of the Chicago addresses of Swami Vivekananda during the Parliament of Religions in September 1893. His participation in that congregation should be seen in the much larger context 
of what he had set out to do in the aggregate. He had in mind the initiation of an integrated plan of action involving determined endeavor to affect radical and positive change in a number of in interconnected areas concerning the human condition in totality. Towards this paramount task, a tremendous sense of purpose and of energy flared from within him. He had exclaimed, and I quote, I feel a mighty power. It is as if I were about to blaze forth there are so many powers in me. It seems to me as if I could revolutionize, I could revolutionize the world." Unquote. At Chicago, in the Parliament of Religions, we know, the world knows, that the impact of his personality, the scintillating brilliance and beauty of his exposition enthralled his audience, and the word traveled far and wide over the telegraph and newspapers in the Western world about his sensational contribution. Amongst others, in that historic assembly, listening and rapt attention to Swami Vivekananda was Dr. Annie Besant. Dr. Besant wrote about the experience thus, I quote, and raptured the huge multitude hung upon his words, not a syllable must be lost not a cadence missed, said one. As he came out of the great hall, and we, this is what that person said coming out of the hall, and this is recorded by Dr. Annie Besant, and we sent, this is what he said, one, as he came out of the great hall, and we sent missionaries to his people. It could be more fitting that they should send missionaries to us. This I said, this is the impact he made a hundred years back. In his address, Swami Vivekananda had articulated the ancient wisdom and insights of India, the time-honored philosophy of oneness and harmony within pluralism, the recognition of, respect for, and acceptance of different paths of logical and intuitive access to the absolute truths. He had quoted the famous lines from the Rig Veda, Ekam Sat Vipra Bahuta Vadanti. The truth is one. The scholars describe it differently. He had quoted the profound perception expressed in a verse from the Vishnu Sahasranama. He said, Akashat Paditam Toyam Yatha Gachati Sagaram Sarvadeva Namaskara Keshavam Pradigachati. He cited the explicit authority in the eleventh verse of the fourth chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. Ye Yatha Maam Prabhadyante Tam Tase Tate Yuvajamiham. Proudly he had proclaimed, we believe, the, I, I quote, we believe not only in universal toleration, but we accept all religions as true, unquote. It is this spirit that is expressed in the philosophy of our seers, in the devotional songs and the prayers of our common people, for centuries past. This outlook has enabled India to become the home and the refuge of all the great religions of the world respected by the broad mass of our people. Swami Vivekananda had also come out strongly against sectarianism, bigotry, and fanaticism, and had registered the hope that these narrow, futile, and erroneous tendencies would disappear. Every word of his exposition needs to be recalled by us and pondered over. In his subsequent address on 15 September 1893, he explained the causes of narrowness and in a truly profound address a hundred years back on 
19 September 1893, he explained many salient features and recesses of the Vedic and Vedantic body of thought and defined the characteristics of a religion whose whole scope, I am quoting, whose whole scope, whole force will be centered in aiding humanity to realize its own true nature, unquote. On 26 September 1893, he provided a masterly exposition concerning the connection between Buddhism and Brahminism. On 27 September, he foretold the maxims, help and not fight, assimilation and not destruction, harmony and peace and not dissension, as the eventual hallmarks of every religious community. I feel from Vivekananda's words concerning the inner oneness of doctrines of all religions should fully be comprehended by each one of us. Indeed, the identity of thought, the oneness in ethical and moral codes of different religions need to be explained